So I decided to do a little self experiment. I decided to try and eat only processed and ultra processed foods for a day and just basically see how it makes me feel. Breakfast is kind of looking like this. Wow. Mm. This is just a small insight into my food stash. This is dinner. I also added an extra twist in this video. As you guys will notice, I only bought reduced food items just because I don't normally eat this way. And so I thought I'd save myself a bit of money and also reduce waste, do a bit more for the planet and just only buy reduced foods. Man. Camera shy. Milk might join in the food challenge. Milk will know. definitely join. Milk will join us as well. So we have these um, reduced biscuits, which we got from Holland and Barrett. Then we have these Gray's oat things, cherry bakewell flavor, which we're gonna put into these bowls, kind of make an oat bowl concoction with deliciously Ella almonds from Holland and Barrett. These were from Lidl. We have some of this nut butter, which we've never tried, Nutri butter. That is from Holland and Barrett. A lot of this came from Holland and Barrett, so we love you, thank you. This is also from Holland and Barrett. It's like chocolate spread. We're putting a base of custard. This is Wicked, and it's from Tesco. This is their vegan range. We froze it, so we're having to <coughs> defrost it. Yeah, so it was very lumpy. Very lumpy. Um, and I don't, I don't really like lumpy custard. What do you want, Milka? You want to try something? Mm. Should I just... Uh... Yeah, just go for it. Go for it. Ooh, custard. This is really good custard, by the way. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I love food so much. Food is so good. On a daily basis, I eat to fuel my best and to fuel my body. So, you know, I aim to get in loads of fiber, all the vitamins, the minerals, the colors, the vibrancy. And I also make sure that, you know, my meals are really balanced so I have my carbohydrates, my healthy fats, my protein. That is what I crave on a daily basis. And as I said, it makes me feel amazing. But from time to time, you know, yes, I will eat out. I'll eat pizza, I'll eat donuts, cakes, chocolate. You know, I will eat that stuff as well. It just has to be vegan for me. Before filming this little challenge, I would have said that the majority or 80 to 90% of my diet was unprocessed or minimally processed. However, I did do a bit of research recently and it kind of made me question a few things. So I came across what is called an ultra processed food. And this is a term that is being increasingly used in scientific research in the nutrition industry. So Nova is this new food categorization system, which classifies foods and drinks according to the extent and purpose of industrial processing. And there are basically four groups. So the first is unprocessed or minimally processed foods. The second is processed culinary ingredients, which are substances extracted from group one not intended for consumption on their own, like sugar or vegetable oils, but instead they're used to cook and season the first group, so minimally or unprocessed foods. Group three are your processed foods, and then you've got your ultra processed foods. So these are made using a series of industrial processes and lots of ingredients are added, basically to make the final product more palatable. It's all right. Mm. It just tastes very vegan. I like that. Mm. Ultra processed foods are things like soft drinks, breakfast cereals, breads, microwave meals, packaged snacks, so many foods these days are ultra processed and you probably don't even realize it. Go, go, go. Mum, would you like to join the taste test? Okay. Mum, never sees food. Mmm, plenty of biscuits. They're wheat-free. Nice chocolate. Really? Well, that's probably why they're yeah. um, friendly. They taste like an oat biscuit. Oh, I'm not. Nice. Mm. I'll give it about a nine. What? Nine. <laughs> 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 I mean, they're like a six or a five. I'm saying like a seven. Oh, nine. Well, they're mine then. Loads of studies these days are trying to analyze how ultra processed food consumption is linked to health outcomes. And the big take home message basically is that the consumption of these foods is not linked to any health benefit at all. A study, for example, in 2020, it looked at 43 studies collectively and 37 of those found at least one association between ultra processed food consumption and an adverse health outcome. So that could be cardiovascular disease, cancer, being overweight, obesity, irritable bowel syndrome, and even things like depression, so mental health conditions. A study published this 
this year actually. It used UK data and it looked at just under 200,000 males and females between the ages of 40 and 69. They measured the consumption of ultra processed food and they found that for every 10% increase in ultra processed food consumption in grams per day, this was associated with an increased incidence of overall cancer cases by 2% and an increased cancer mortality of 6%. Now, I should say that both of these studies I've mentioned are only observational, so they are at risk of like confounding, so other factors influencing the results and we can't say for sure that these associations are causative. If you do biology, you'll know that correlation does not mean causation, but there are definitely possible explanations that could link, you know, ultra processed food consumption with cancer or a different health outcome. So we do know, for example, the ultra processed foods, they're very convenient. They're like marketed, they're always in your face. They're often like quite addictive and they're like very hyper palatable. So they keep you coming back for more and that over consumption could lead to obesity which is a risk factor for loads of other things they often don't leave you feeling very satiated as well so again that can promote you know over consumption of these types of foods which also don't have a very good nutritional profile they don't contain a lot of micronutrients and vitamins and minerals that promote good health and so it's not surprising that these observational studies are finding links between their consumption and adverse health outcome there's so much research nowadays about your gut and particular studies these days are looking at the individual food ingredients like the additives and also potential carcinogens that are formed during processing for example like very high temperatures used during cooking like acrylamide those might be linked to certain types of cancer for example we're gonna try these and tell you what they're like <gasps> smell them look how cute they are try it i've never had a savory muffin wow with pine nuts and basil i'm not really a savory pastry person so this is quite you know rosy. you're gonna like this i think this is the pie it's oh. cute we also have in the freezer um where are they where are they these no chicken kievs by oh my vegan which is asda i'm excited i have not had chicken kievs in years these aren't chicken obviously real chicken but you know vegan chicken Ooh, ooh, they're sizzling wow now basically everything i ate on this day would be classified as an ultra processed food which is kind of crazy when you think about it but the consumption of ultra processed foods is increasing worldwide quite significantly and it contributes up to more than 50 percent of energy intake in some high income countries these ultra processed foods they're generally nutritionally inferior compared to minimally or unprocessed foods they're higher in calories total unsaturated fats salt sugar a lot lower in fiber and many micronutrients so class Classifying foods in this way is really useful. No, I did have mine cold. It's alright, do you want to try it? Or no. No? no. Mum's like, I don't want to try it. <laughs> sure, so it's quite peppery. Yeah, it's, 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 maybe mine it's like mushroomy, no? Oh, mum, mum, huh? It's not my typical go to thing, but it's alright. Oh, hot. <sighs> However, I want you to know that ultra processed foods in this classification system isn't perfect. You know, sometimes it's quite difficult to determine whether something is ultra processed or not and what category to put it in. And we have to remember that there is a lot more to nutrition and health research than just how a food is simply processed. Something that is processed or even ultra processed might not be as bad as it first seems. So just keep that in mind. Oh, there it is coming out. Oh. Oh yeah, he's, he's definitely lost all of it. You've lost quite a lot of it. Interesting. Mmm. That's one ridiculous. It is like chicken mm. beer, isn't it? Mm. Isn't it like, do you, and I remember, yeah, because I used to like chicken beer. Yeah, that tastes that, good. Tastes like garlic bread. Mum got some focaccia. Sea salt and uh, rosemary tomato focaccia. Mmm. Mmm, mm, it's nice. That is quite good. Mmm. It's extra special, you see. Mm. On this day of eating like only processed and ultra processed foods, I did realize quite a few things about the way it makes me feel. You know, you do have this instant hit of dopamine and euphoria because like the food tastes amazing. Like you'll take that first bite and be like, oh my God. I know. Don't, I know, I know, I know. Holy, holy, stop, stop, please. Don't die, don't die. But quickly afterwards, I did realize that the food was just making me feel so bloated. I have a bit of an upset stomach from 
something I ate, I don't know. My digestion was definitely thrown off. Like I was so gassy on that day. And over the next couple of days, as I was like processing everything in my digestive system, I have an upset stomach. <laughs> because it lacks a lot of fiber, it doesn't really make you feel very full at all. So you don't get those satiety signals. And often you'll have like these crazy sugar highs and then you might crash afterwards. I mean, if you've eaten this way or you've experienced something similar, feel free to leave your stories and insights down below. But one thing in particular for me personally is the way artificial sweetness make me feel day. Oh my gosh, you guys, they screw up my digestion. This is a PhD bar. I've never tried these before. It's got the Vego bar. We have Vego bars. This one's peanut butter and jelly. So interesting combination of flavors. But I think they use pea protein for that. So really? It's quite grainy, I think. 20 grams of protein. Oh, this. Disgusting, isn't it? That is not worth the hype. It's, it's like the bitterness from a very highly sweetened artificially sweetened dessert mm. sweeteners don't taste good no tastes awful just put no more sugar in please sweeteners really mess with your digestion don't buy this oh look at this it's so thick like <laughs> so good mm. Mm. Ah. i just want to show you guys the realities of sometimes buying reduced food i reckon that's why they reduced it but yeah, it mm. doesn't look very good. So, unfortunately, that can't be eaten. Otherwise, you will upset your stomach. Mm. Can you imagine eating that? When you first think of ultra-processed foods, you generally consider microwave meals, which we basically had for dinner. But as I think you guys now know, ultra-processed foods is a much broader category. And some of the characteristic ingredients in these ultra-processed foods include food substances that you rarely use in the kitchen. So for example, high fructose corn syrup, maltodextrin, protein isolates, or hydrogenated oils. Ultra-processed foods often contain cosmetic additives. So these are things like flavors, flavor enhancers, emulsifiers, thickeners, and artificial sweeteners, usually the ingredients that you seriously do not recognize. As an example, I'll put the ingredients list on the screen for this vegan mac and cheese. It contains so many ingredients and so for example it's got a thickener it's got colors and just so many other ingredients that you just wouldn't normally use yourself in the kitchen mm, what's it saying yeah it's great it's good it's hot it's good mm -hmm. really mm. okay pretty interesting good. two dogs wishing we dropped things more often look I look at their faces but anyway this is dinner falafel rice some rice that mum donated for us, katsu, curry thing, and mac and cheese. Oh yeah, we take donations for sure. We take good donations of food. All right, hello guys. Not sure why uh, Holly's left me to vlog, but, cause I, I'm, I'm just not used to this sort of thing, you know, I, I don't really, it feels weird talking to a camera, but I know there's people on the other side, you know, and obviously appreciate all you guys watching. Uh, Holly and uh, what am I talking about? Let me get the goo. Part of our dessert, we've got the goose. Let me get focus. Oh, there you go. So, this is Zinni now. Holly, I'm so bad at vlogging. Come on. I'm terrible at vlogging. <laughs> I brought you some extra stuff that you might want to do. Oh, the main event though. Oh my gosh, we found this in MS the other day. The cake in a jar. Thank you. So, after this mini episode of Holly Tries, I succeeded you know in only eating processed and ultra processed food but you know it did make me question do i eat more ultra processed and processed foods on a daily basis and more than i actually realized and at the end of this video i thought i would share ways in which you can spot processed and ultra processed foods when you are doing your shops which is what i generally do and what i look for as well generally processed and ultra processed foods they have bright and bold packaging they have like these health claims you know they're trying to make you buy their product the ingredients list will be really long and you'll often spot ingredients that you don't recognize or you don't use in your own kitchen in supermarkets people say you should shop on the outskirts because that's where you'll find like minimally processed and unprocessed foods and if you do try something you don't look at the ingredients necessarily an ultra processed food will literally taste hive palatable and it might not make you feel full. Now I might film other videos that kind of link to this topic because I think it's really, really interesting and let me know if you guys want to hear anything in particular in this kind of realm. But the final message I just kind of want to leave you guys with is you know, you could eat what you want at the end of the day. But you know, deep down, I do know that for amazing health benefits and longevity, you need to focus on whole, 
unrefined plant foods you need to center your diet around plants i'm not telling you to do anything of course i just hope you guys learned something in this video you found it useful definitely like it if you did comment down below subscribe if you are new and as always i'll speak to you very soon in another video bye guys this is uh Heard. Right, this is gonna this be. This is me struggling again. Big, big, big spoon. The holy spoon. This one has my okay. name on it. Mmm, that's that smooth. smooth. Right that looks extremely beige. You're holding yourself. Just let everything out. Just, just let everything go. Dangle. That's a bit better. Now put it straight. Bend it straighten your knees a little bit more, right? Oh my god. <gasps> it just went everywhere. Dunk it in coffee. Oh my god. You actually did it on. How many years did that? <laughs> Ready? Three, mm. two, one. Oh, it's too big. It's, That's too, it's too big. It's too big. Now for the main event. Ooh. Oh my God. Steam. It's my daily diet as a 16 year old. What? This was your daily diet as a 16 year old? It kind of looks like poo right now, but. Yeah, what's that? I'm going to get this.